I'm Russ Martin, former Delaware County Sheriff and Chief of Police for the City of Delaware. I worked in law enforcement for more than 40 years before recently retiring. I have no connection to the Blendon Township Police Department, but they asked me to provide and review some context that might be helpful to the general public about the body-worn camera video from the tragic officer-involved shooting that recently happened. I want to be clear. I won't be making any conclusions about whether what the officer did was right or wrong. That's the job of other agencies. I'll simply offer analysis similar to what any investigator might look at when reviewing body ward camera video of a use of force incident. Let's take a look at the video. Police officer one was already in the front of the Kroger parking lot after a citizen called and asked for help after locking herself out of her car. This is a common call for police. We can see that he's using tools police carry in their car to try to open the locked car door. Police officer two, who had just finished with a nearby car accident, is on the scene and also tries to help unlock the citizen's car. As officer number two is working, a Kroger employee approaches him from behind and points to a woman getting into her car. The Kroger employee tells officer two that the woman getting into the black Lexus has just stolen things from the store. Police officers routinely may be focused on one task in a public setting, then, when abruptly interrupted, must then redirect focus to a more pressing matter. Officer number two quickly approaches the Lexus and attempts to talk to the suspect. He repeatedly tells her to stop and get out of the running car. It's well within the legal authority of police to temporarily stop and detain anyone believed to be part of a potential crime. Officer one appears to notice what his colleague is doing and walks over to assist. As officer two continues to loudly tell the driver to get out of the car, Officer 1 walks past him briskly and moves around to the front of the car. Police officers are generally at greater risk either directly in front of or behind a car for obvious reasons. Drivers can drive forward or backward into the officers when they're in that most vulnerable position. Generally, police training teaches that when two officers have approached a car on foot or intend to interview a suspect on the street, they will take a position that gives them the best advantage for observing what the suspect is doing. In police parlance, this is simply referred to as contact and cover. One officer is attempting to contact the person to be interviewed while the assisting officer is providing cover or oversight of the scene. Officers are trained that one of the most dangerous encounters they face on the job involves a driver seated in a car. It's dangerous because there are many places in a car where a weapon can be hidden and the driver's hands are often out of view. While this suspect didn't have a weapon, the officers didn't know that at the time. Nineteen seconds into the encounter, the suspect rolls her window down a few inches and asks why she's being stopped. Officer 2 tells her that a Kroger employee has accused her of stealing. Citizens can ask why they are being detained or ordered to comply and, in most cases, when there's time and no urgent circumstances, the officer should provide an answer, as Officer 2 does. Ohio law requires everyone to comply with the lawful order of a police officer. Although she's been ordered to get out of the running car many times by now, the driver starts to turn the steering wheel to the right as Officer 1 is directly in front of the car, in a clearly vulnerable position. Officer number 1 draws his firearm and, again, loudly orders the woman to stop the car. Police officers are trained to draw their firearms when threatened with deadly force, which can be from a gun, a knife, or a vehicle. In the next second, the driver steps on the gas and the car moves forward. When you look at side-by-side -side footage from both officers' body cameras, you can see that the suspect's car pushes Officer 1 backwards several feet. It's clear from the video that the car makes contact with the officer. In the next second, you can see that both of Officer 1's feet are off the ground. At this moment, Officer 1 fires a single shot through the windshield. Officer 1 is then able to slide off the hood of the moving car as it rolls towards the building. Officers run to keep up with the moving car and, from the video, it doesn't appear that the officers would have any way of knowing whether the driver is in control of the car. When the car stops, they act quickly to get the driver out of the car which is what they are often trained to do. I was asked only to make observations of what I saw from the officer's body-worn camera video from this brief encounter. 
While we have the benefit of slow motion after the fact, it's important to remember that police officers have to make these difficult decisions in a split second, often in the middle of a highly stressful and very dangerous situation. With over 40 years in law enforcement, my review is based on my experience as a law enforcement veteran who has been exposed to some of the best training available and as one who managed a police department and a sheriff's office. In my career, I've noticed that many people will make judgments without all the facts. Sadly, that's the world we live in today. It's always tragic when unpredictable encounters lead to the loss of life. Frankly, with any death, there is often inconsolable grief. The events and outcomes of the decisions made on that fateful day will have a lasting impact on the family of Takaya Young, the community, and the officers involved. My experience in cases like this is that patience to allow investigators to do their job is the best way to ensure justice is done. Thank you.